the government's interest payments have actually ballooned over the last two years, even on a higher nominal GDP base for this year. Interest payments constitute 3.4% of the GDP. Just to understand the magnitude of this number, the government's interest payments are higher than what it aims to earn via corporate taxes, the target for which is 7 lakh crore for this financial year. Also, 35% of this year's budget has been financed by borrowings. As recently as two years ago, this was 20%. Given the trajectory over the last two years, post-COVID and now the fallout of the Ukraine conflict, the coming budget too is likely to pencil a sizable interest payment chunk, especially when government borrowings too will be somewhat higher next fiscal and interest rates have also gone up. Right, uh, Sapna, many thanks for joining us and staying with the budget. This budget will be the last full budget before the 2024 general election. Sources say the budget may widen the base of the Sukanya Samriddhi scheme, which is a small savings scheme for the girl child. The finance minister may also announce a special health insurance policy for people who are not covered under the Ayushman Bharat health insurance scheme or under private health policies. The exemption threshold under interest income for senior citizens may also be hiked from 50,000 to up to 1 lakh rupees per annum. The defence industry has sought a higher capital outlay for defence procurement and higher R&D incentives in the upcoming budget. Let's listen in to industry's wish list. My hope is that defence budget will show a real increase, which means after factoring in inflation, there will be real increase in the outlay for defence procurement. Defence procurement budgets do make adequate provision for R&D. And that is something which can be taken care of by make one projects. We need more and more make one projects. We used to get a income tax benefit on R&D spends done in the companies, which has now been withdrawn since the year, I think a year before last, this was withdrawn. We could easily put that, this will not even ask for additional budget. All it is asking, for an incentive for expenditure on R&D in defense, which should be maybe considered at 200% of the spend so that you can save on taxes. Well, budget expectations ahead of the big day on the 1st of February. Now, the Indus Tower Board met today to decide its next course of action after receiving no monthly installment payment from Vodafone Idea. Indus Tower had allowed Vodafone Idea to clear past dues worth 7,000 crores by July this year. Indus Tower had said that they would take drastic measures if payments were not made. We are still awaiting clarity on what has transpired. Tech giant Microsoft has made its third investment into OpenAI, the company that developed ChatGPT. Microsoft had earlier made investments in ChatGPT in 2019 and 2021. While Microsoft has not revealed the exact amount, reports suggest it could be pumping in about $10 billion in a bid to challenge Google in the artificial intelligence and the search business. Days after Google's parent Alphabet announced that it is laying off 12,000 employees, CEO Sundar Pichai defended the decision, telling employees the move was taken to avoid, and I quote, much worse issues. In an internal meeting, Pichai said, and I quote again, if you don't act clearly and decisively and early, we can compound the problem and make it much worse. These are decisions I needed to make, end of quote. Twitter has been sued by its landlord for allegedly failing, failing to pay rent for its headquarters in San Francisco. The company failed to pay $3.36 million in December and $3.4 million in January. It's not just San Francisco. The company is being sued by London's Crown Estate for allegedly failing to pay rent for its London headquarters. Now, the WHO has called for immediate action from regulators and government after a spate of child deaths linked to cough syrups. Ekta joins us now to explain to us what steps the World Health Organization has suggested. Ekta, what is the WHO's charter for action? The World Health Organization has released an urgent call to action to countries to help prevent, detect and respond to incidents of substandard and falsified medical products. The statement by the WHO is after countries have reported several incidents over the past four months of over-the-counter cough syrups for children being either confirmed to be or suspected to be contaminated with high levels of substances diethylene glycol or ethylene glycol. The WHO has indicated there have been cases from at least seven countries associated with more than 300 fatalities in three of these countries. Most young children under the age of five. WHO has issued three global medical alerts. Remember, 
two of them were to do with Indian companies. The first was in October 2022, with Made in Pharma being allegedly responsible for deaths of over 65 children in Gambia, and the second in January 2023, which is this month, for Marin Biotech allegedly linked to deaths of over 15 children in Uzbekistan. The Indian government has given a clean chit to Made in Pharma, and the UP government has suspended Marin Biotech's license. Lastly, WHO calls on various stakeholders to take immediate and coordinated action. This includes asking regulators and the government to remove from circulation substandard medical products and manufacturers to purchase pharma-grade excipients from qualified and bona fide suppliers, conduct testing, keep records, amongst other measures. Thanks very much, Ek. The serious challenge that requires a proper investigation. Aviation regulator, the DGC has imposed another penalty of 10 lakh rupees on Air India, this time for two incidents that occurred on the Paris to Delhi flight on the 6th of December. One passenger was caught smoking in the lavatory and was not adhering to the crew's instructions. Another allegedly relieved himself on a vacant seat and blanket of a fellow female passenger. The DGC says the penalty is because Air India did not report the incident to the regulator and delayed in referring the matter to its internal committee. And here's more on Air India. The latest in the Air India November 26 urination incident. The airline has issued a statement saying it has closed the investigation into this matter. It says the derostered crew have been counselled and have returned on duty. But most importantly, Air India says it deems the licence suspension of the commander excessive and will assist him with filing an appeal. Separately, six different cabin crew and pilot unions have written to the DGCA urging them to withdraw the harsh punishment and suspension of the pilot in command. The unions add that the accused passenger's polite and cooperative decorism was very it was the very reason that the pilot and the cabin supervisor and the crew on board could not have branded him an unruly passenger. UPI has been one of the biggest generational changes that has swept India. The country's millennial and Gen Z population has lived through this transformation and been quick to get hooked onto the new trend. As part of CPC tv 18s ongoing series, the UPI generation Radhika Udas reports on the biggest use cases for the payment revolution. Choice. It's one of the things that makes young India tick, but it's not just about choice in what to eat or wear or own. It's also about choice in how to pay for what you want. And that's where UPI, or Unified Payments Interface, has scored big. For India's millennials and Gen Z, the evolution of this choice has unfolded before their eyes. From having to carry cash, they moved to debit and credit cards, then to the ease of net banking. And now, they have the choice to scan and pay using just their mobile phones. Experts say this choice has also molded the spending patterns of these two generations. A CNBC TV18 poll of young Indians residing mainly in urban areas revealed these youngsters most often whip out their UPI apps when ordering food through food aggregator apps. 79% of them said this is their most employed use case. Physically buying food at restaurants and groceries at stores comes second at 72%, with online shopping a close third at 70%. Paying for cabs on aggregator apps like Ola and Uber rank fourth at 65%. But this popularity goes beyond just ease of payments. It's also about low transaction costs. Since UPI has launched, people have now stopped using cards also. Majority people want to do it, uh, scan it and pay. There is no deductions, first of all. In the card payments, there are deductions. But we do uh, majority around 20% uh, of the 20 to 25% sales through the online online sales, online food uh, aggregators. I am using UPI for my all transactions. I don't keep cash. So what are the favorite apps? For ordering my uh, meal for in the mess, in the canteen and like whatever you use it as like you tell online shopping everything I use GPay for that. Normally for Zomato, Swiggy, uh, Amazon, Uber Ola and all these apps. For literally everything like college canteen, online shopping, Zomato, everything. It's not just online stores and businesses that have seen a jump in business due to increased adoption of UPI. It has also changed the way brick-and-mortar consumer-facing entities operate, whether they're mom-and-pop stores or restaurants or clothing stores or even travel agents. Making payments, the biggest challenge that we had was, uh, which we kind of now don't realize because we're using it so much, is the change. 
and that expression that they are changed they know that the shopkeeper either is running to the next shop to find change or the person is struggling to get change uh, or you could say the grocery store is giving you five candies instead of the change now with upi coming in and you are making this so it doesn't matter whether it is uh, ending the bill is ending with a 3 rupee or a 5 rupee or a 7 rupee the success of upi in india has become a talking point for the government At a recent Google event, IT Minister Ashwini Vaishnav said that the UPI platform is already being deployed in countries like Nepal, UAE, France, and the UK. And India is also in talks with 30 other countries to expand the UPI footprint further. But this rapid adoption and explosive growth has brought with it its own set of challenges. I'm Radhika Udas, and I get into all those details on the next edition of the UPI Generation right here on CNBC TV 18.